Extensive stonework bridges and trails are familiar sites at state and national parks around the country, but most visitors don't know the history behind them. This is only part of the far-reaching legacy of a program that changed the lives of millions of men, the Civilian Conservation Corps. Breaking the barriers of unemployment during the Great Depression, the CCC. The 20s was a roaring decade of economic prosperity and mass consumerism, all fueled by rapid expansion of the stock market. But this period of wealth promptly ended on October 29, 1929. The stock market crashed, wiping out investors and pushing America into the beginning of a massive depression. The Great Depression was the largest economic downturn in U.S. history. Millions of people lost their jobs. By 1933, one in four Americans were out of work. Even those lucky enough to maintain a working position still had significant pay cuts. Many young men took off riding trains trying to find any work they could. Farmers in the Midwest and Southern Plains were among the hardest hit. They had to deal not only with the falling prices of crops, but also with devastating dust storms. The dust storms were not random. They were the result of years of bad farming practices. The eroded soil was easily blown off plowed land, creating huge storms constructed from clouds of dust. These storms were nothing short of a nightmare. But the dust storms were only one of many problems. I also remember fires, floods, drought, erosion, soil gone. What do you have to live on? We were in a sad condition environmentally, and it was a critical situation. The nation was in much need of an economic and environmental reform. After Hoover, Americans were fed up with the government's lack of involvement in aiding the needy. In 1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt, the Democratic governor of New York, was elected president. So, I pledge myself to a new deal for the American people. Roosevelt's New Deal would attempt to lift America out of the Depression by creating a series of programs, financial reforms, and regulations. The day after Roosevelt's inauguration, on March 5th, Congress was called into special session. Thus began the 100 days that would produce agencies and programs that were part of the New Deal. Among the National Recovery Administration, Public Works Administration, and more, one program stood out close to Roosevelt's heart, the Civilian Conservation Corps. The Corps was designed to put 500,000 unemployed youths to work in forests and parks. As governor of New York, Roosevelt was a leader in forest conservation. The state-level programs he fostered as governor would become a model for the CCC. The president sent a message to the 73rd Congress. I propose to create a civilian conservation corps. More important, however, than the material gains will be the moral and spiritual value of such work. On March 31, 1933, Congress passed a bill establishing the Civilian Conservation Corps. Instead of establishing a new federal bureaucracy, Roosevelt used the existing Agriculture, War, Interior, and Labor Departments. An impressive cooperation between government agencies occurred. The Department of Labor was in charge of recruitment, the Department of War was in charge of daily functioning, the Department of Agriculture supervised projects, and the Interior Department was to oversee work in national and state parks. The U.S. Army also helped to maintain and supply CCC camps. Mobilization was so fast that the first boy enrolled only 37 days after Roosevelt took office. First, we are giving opportunity of employment to a quarter of a million of the unemployed. That is a big task because it means feeding and clothing and caring for nearly twice as many men as we have in the regular army itself. And in creating this civilian conservation corps, we are killing two birds with one stone. We are clearly enhancing the value of our natural resources, and at the same time, we are relieving an appreciable amount of actual distress. In 1932, more than five million young men were unemployed. Conditions were especially hard for African Americans. They were the first to be fired and the last to be hired. The CCC, however, gave these young men, white and black, opportunities for employment. 
The requirements to enroll were simple. You had to be an unmarried man between the ages of 18 and 26, physically fit and a U.S. citizen. Eventually, World War I veterans who were unemployed and living on the streets by the masses were exempt from these rules and could be enrolled in separate camps. Enrollment of 1,400 Native Americans and 2,400 local experienced men were also authorized. The men who secured jobs in the CCC worked about eight hours a day, five days a week. They were paid $30 a month and were required to send $25 home. While it wasn't much, it was still more money than they would otherwise be making. There were many benefits as well. They were provided with three meals a day, a luxury for the time, a place to sleep, shoes, and medical care. Camps were strategically placed in rural areas across the country and in key congressional districts. FDR was also hopeful that placing men in a natural setting would be rejuvenating. By the end of 1933, camps were well established. The top priority of the CCC was protection of the country's forest resources, but crew projects also included park development and soil erosion control. Approximately 3 billion trees were planted. All the new trees helped to keep topsoil in place, break the wind, and keep water in the soil, which prevented erosion and saved forest land that was in danger of being lost. The projects also helped to make state and national parks more accessible to the general public and attract tourism. Later projects included disaster relief and even firefighting. These civilian conducted projects helped to reverse some of the man-made problems such as dust storms created by deforestation and farming. Not only did the CCC give men temporary jobs, but it also got them ready for the workforce. It provided men with future opportunities through educational classes. Roosevelt said he didn't want anyone to leave the camps illiterate. Enrollees were provided with elementary and high school level courses, along with vocational classes if they chose to take them. Over 40,000 men learned to read and write. The men were also given recreational time when they were done with their day's labor. If they weren't taking a class at the time, enrollees could participate in sports games against the local teams, spend time with campmates, or relax. While the New Deal grew in popularity among much of the nation, many people still had reservations. Labor unions were at first aghast at the low pay. Many other people worried that the programs cost too much, especially during a time of economic trouble. On top of this, the New Deal expanded the power of the federal government, which worried many, and they called it his socialistic experiment. Years later, it was found that some of the CCC's projects were detrimental. Swamps were drained to control mosquitoes, which had negative effects on the wildlife. Soil erosion was fought by planting invasive plants like kutsu as ground cover. Regardless, the CCC was considered to be one of the most successful programs of the New Deal, but all good things must come to an end. Following the bombing of Pearl Harbor, it became clear to Congress that their money was better spent on war efforts. The military also needed men to enroll. Although the CCC was not a military camp, it was structured much like one. Life in the camps was hard work. Between the training and physical intensity of the work tasks, the CCC had created a group of well-trained men ready for war. The U.S.'s involvement in World War II was what eventually pulled the United States out of the Great Depression for good. Then, following the war, many employers aimed to hire former CCC members as they had gained a reputation of being hardworking. In its short life from 1933 to 1942, the Civilian Conservation Corps put out 3,500 fires, slowed erosion in 40 million acres of farmland, developed 800 new state parks, constructed 97,000 miles of road, and planted more than 2 billion trees. Over its nine-year lifespan, the CCC broke barriers to employment for millions of people. It broke the perception that the government was not supposed to assist people in their financial problems. The Corps also broke barriers when it came to environmental awareness, helping to rewind years of neglect of the environment. Although disbanded, the CCC's legacy has forever impacted the United States. It has helped people become aware of the importance of conservation and left us with some amazing parks.